previously on Port Charles. He's very attractive and very nice and sweet. And I just, I feel rotten for using him like this. You're not getting involved, are you? Of course not. This person or these people, they have all the cards. Yeah, well, then I'll get another deck of cards. I see, so that's the choice I have? I, I lie to Kevin or you just cut me out? Your call. That was Dr. Cornermain on the phone. My hearing's tomorrow. He looks like a fun guy. Yeah, you think we're gonna be that miserable when we're on staff? <laughs> At least Scanlon won't have that problem. Try not to sound too delighted. You know, I was pretty surprised when they called me last night and said I had to be here this morning. Yeah. Oh. I bet Joe was even more surprised. I hate this. How can they make us make statements right in front of him? It feels so unfair, like we're ganging up on him. All right, well, here's what we say. We were all in that room. I mean, it was a group decision. Yeah. Whoa, speak for yourself. There's no way I was part of what went on. Lucky you. Good morning, Dr. Burgess. Yeah, hello wouldn't kill you. Yes, it would. Look, where is Karen? Everyone else is here. Yeah, focus, Joe, okay? This is your future that we're meeting about. I know that. Yeah, if you blow up in there, it's going to tell everybody you're a hothead. Look, do me a favor, all right? Stop coaching me. This isn't baseball. Well, I hope you're happy. I had to hear about this hearing from that stuck-up nurse on five. Uh, there wasn't time, Mom. One of the doctors was called out of town. It was either now or a month from now. But we're not ready. Mom, first off, it's not we, okay? It is me, and I'm as ready as I'll ever be. And besides, it beats the hell out of waiting. Here come the quarter mains. It's like no one ever sat in judgment on them. Uh, good morning, Mary. Gentlemen. Mind you, give me a second to talk with Joe. Good luck, sweetheart. And behave yourself. I'll say a litany to St. Joseph for you. Well, Ma, you couldn't be that worried or it'd be to St. Jude. Stick up for him now. I will, Ma. Bye. Bye. Now, just remember, you did nothing wrong. Sure. Keep it cool. Everything will be okay. Well, the board can decide however it wants, Frank, and there's not a damn thing you or I can do about it. Yep, it's time for your antibiotic once again. Why do I have to be the one that keeps reminding you of this? All right, Here. listen, where's Kevin? He's upstairs. He's getting dressed. Now, listen to me. I really, truly trust him. I think you should, too. He, he, he's... I trust him with my life, actually. Here. Well, you can trust him with your life, but I'm not trusting him with my daughter's life. I just feel weird not telling him about this strange appointment, at least telling him what I suspect. Why? Why? Because he hates it. Absolutely hates it. If I lie to him, take your pills. Well, you know what? That happens to be the deal that we made, remember? Why can't we use his mind? He has a great mind. He may point out hidden dangers and pitfalls that we don't see. Let me ask you something, all right? If you told him that you were being set up by Serena's kidnapper... Shh! Would he let you go? Nobody lets me do anything. Well, he wouldn't. And if I was in his shoes, I wouldn't either. Okay, so there. You see, the two of you finally agree on something. You're pregnant and you're in love with this guy. If you don't want to risk that, like I said, I understand. I don't blame you. Oh, yeah. Not too much. But I want you to do it for me. I know. And I will. You keep forgetting I really consider Serena like my little girl. So if I have to go and face kidnappers, then that's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, but remember, we don't tell Kevin, agreed? Tell me what? I was just telling Lucy not to tell you that, uh, you know, how much pain I'm in. But as you can see, that I'm not quite up to speed here. Oh, that's too bad. I was hoping you and I could do that Macarena dance this Friday at the nurse's ball. You want to tell me what you're really talking about? Doc, you know, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but that Macarena thing is sort of passe. You know, it's the one you go like this, you go like this and this. And I just think that jump and flip thing, he probably couldn't Lucy. do with his condition. The door. I'm gonna get the door. Excuse me. I wonder who it could be. Maybe it's some news or something, you know? Hi! 
Hi, what a lovely surprise. It's, um, Karen. Hi, I hope I didn't come by too early. Oh, gosh, no. Please, would you just come right in? It'd be lovely to have you come in. Um, am I intruding? No, no, not, not at, at all. all. Scott, no, look who's here. Doc, Hi. Karen. How are you feeling? Um, blousy. Sit down. Thank you. <clears throat> have you heard any news about your little girl at all? No, I haven't. Not a word. That must be awful for you. I don't suppose there's anything that uh, I could do. You know, actually, you were very helpful, Max said, about, you know, um, recognizing that car that tried to mow me down there. That that was good. That's that's about it. So, how, what, what are you up to? I, I'm fine. I came over about my friend again, Joe Scanlon. I know him, I think. I mean, isn't that Frank's brother? You know, Frank and Doc were big heroes. They pulled me out of this big elevator. It was a mess. Well, did you check with that uh, the list of lawyers that I gave you? Yes, I did. Thank you. Um... The ones that returned my calls said that they were too busy to get involved. Well, I don't let me think about it. I'll, I'll try and come up with somebody. I'll, I'll find a representation, all right? Okay. Um, it's just that Joe's review board got moved up to this morning. Can they do that to him? Well, unfortunately, a hospital is not like a court of law. The same protections don't apply. Sounds disgusting to me. Yeah, the joys of the review board. I know it well. Is there anyone that you can think of? Anyone who can just drop everything right away and help him? Buddy, I, I knew was on that list. Okay. Thank you. Um, you've got enough on your mind. Uh, thanks for everything. Well, really, I. You can't, uh, Lucy, you must know a lawyer. Oh uh, yeah. No, I I can't wait. I have to get over there right away and and testify. Here. Um. Good luck. I hope that they find Serena soon. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. I'll see see you. Bye. Bye. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank you all for coming here on such short notice. I'd also like to remind you this is an informal inquiry informal, into I Dr. Scanlon's it. emergency procedure that he performed on Audrey Hardy the night of June the 1st. If, however, we find that Dr. Scanlon took an unnecessary risk with her life, we do have the power here on this board to terminate his internship. An epidural hematoma is an emergent situation, so if no action is taken within a certain time frame, the patient might sustain serious brain damage or even death. Tony, I'm not a doctor. What do you mean by certain time frame? Depends on the patient's condition. In Audrey's case, it could have been a matter of minutes. Tony, you examined Mrs. Hardy the night she was injured. Can you offer an opinion of her condition? Or specifically, what would have happened if Dr. Scanlon had not operated? Well, it's quite possible she could have died. This may look like a common construction tool, but it's not. It is a craniotomy drill, normally used to release intracranial pressure. It allows the surgeon to have precise control of the procedure. And Dr. Scanlon used? An electric drill with a half-inch bit. It's like killing a mosquito with a sledgehammer. It's not like I had a choice. Sit down. Dr. Scanlon, you'll have more than enough time to defend yourself. Right now, we're just trying to get the big picture, okay? Sorry, sir. You're right. Go ahead. Mrs. Hardy had to undergo second surgery to repair minor arterial bleed here. Was this to repair damage caused by Dr. Scanlon? I can't say. But possibly? Yes. In, excuse me, may I ask a question of the doctor? You may if it's relevant. Uh, it is. Now, during the surgery to which you just referred, wasn't there a computer malfunction? There was. And didn't you have to improvise in order to save the patient's life? Dr. Jones is no intern. Uh, but that's a fair question. I did have to improvise, and thank God I got lucky. But given the fact that you were in a sterile environment supported by a team of trained technicians, unlike Dr. Scanlon, were the dangers comparable in your estimation? No, they were not. The uh, patient's condition has stabilized. There's no further signs of uh, infection or permanent disability. And the prognosis is for a full recovery. Uh, Tony, I have one last question. If you had been in Dr. Scanlon's position, what would you have done? It actually wouldn't be fair for me to answer that question because, thank God, I wasn't in that situation. But if you were? Well, doctors oftentimes can't plan how they're going to react. 
they just let their training take over and and then pray later on that the, their decisions were the right ones. Anybody else have any questions? Okay, Tony, thank you very much. That's all. I can't believe I couldn't come up with a lawyer for Karen. I've been out of town, you know, I'm out of touch. Yeah, well, you just got back, and you've had other things to focus on. Yeah. It's Joe Scanlon. Who is this guy anyways? I mean, uh, Karen seems to care about him a lot. Uh, yeah, you know, um, I think he stayed with her the whole night of your accident there. Where's Jagger? That's a very good question, isn't it? Well, like I said, she seems to care about this guy. I mean, he was killing her to come to me and ask for help. She may also think that whatever's happening to Joe is happening to her, that they're a unit. May as well be her hearing. Now I've left this guy kind of high and dry. I let Karen down. I don't think she really believes that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure she can handle this well enough. Well, what does that mean? Just what I said. She seems like a very determined young lady. You ought to say yes when you mean yes and no when you mean no. You think I'm a lousy father? Well, I just found out that I was a father. Actually, Scott, I never thought that. <clears throat> but speaking of absent fathers, I have to go see mine. Lucy, would you like a lift to the hospital? Uh, oh, thanks, Doc. But no, I'm going to gather up all my nurse's ball notes, you know, and everything. And, and I really need to just touch up my hair and put on a fresh coat of lipstick and all. You come find me afterwards? Um, why? Because I'd like to know that everything is all right. Of course, absolutely. Do not worry. Everything is going to be just fine. I like to worry. <sighs> I know. I'll see you later. Okay. Ugh, I hate this. Thank you. No, I really hate it. I mean, I, I, I don't like this. I, it's so scary because he knows when I'm lying. He can usually see right through me. Well, I hate sitting around here not being able to do anything and that the kidnappers call you so that we have to follow that plan. Look, I will call you as soon as I know or find out anything. That's what I hate, hate. I can't do anything. I can't do anything for Serena. I just gotta sit around here like an idiot. You know what? You may not be able to do anything for Serena right now, but... But what? You do have two daughters, pal. I just want to say that I think what Joe did took a lot of nerve. Do you mean that in the pejorative sense, Doctor? Well, I don't want to seem harsh or judgmental. You just tell us what you think. We'll do the judging. Okay. Well, like I said at the time, I thought the whole thing was ill-advised. We had uh, neither the proper training nor the proper tools. It was both risky and unsterile. I also told him there could be legal repercussions. I guess he was just uh, too upset to listen. Dr. Ramsey, Dr. Jones said quick action was imperative. Well, we were rescued within an hour of the operation. Yeah, but you didn't know that had happened. No, but it was obvious that Cooper was becoming irrational and would make a mistake at any moment. Of course, it was difficult for Dr. Scanlon to think straight, what with the guy holding a gun in his face, uh, insisting that he had to do the surgery. Excuse me? Well, it was the gunman's idea. Didn't you know that? Are you saying that Cooper forced Scanlon to operate? That is not what happened. It was more like he suggested it. He told us that we'd all be heroes. What bothered me was that he was manipulating everyone and, you know, they didn't seem to realize. I, the more I protested against it, the more inflamed everyone else became. I realized I had no control over the operative group dynamic and I had to back out. And you still think you made the right decision? Well, I'm sorry my prediction came true, but I stand by my original assessment. The risk of waiting was less than the risk of operating. Thank you, Dr. Ramsey. All Joe's hopes and dreams are in their hands right now. Those cold doctor hands that stopped feeling a long time ago. But my boy, he's still alive inside. He's worked so hard, both him and Frank, to get this far. 
Frank could have been a big football star, you know, at Notre Dame before he had... Before he had to come home. But he never complained. He went right to work. Took care of us. Put Joe through med school. And now all that hard work, sacrifice, is on the line. I go to Mass every Sunday. And I believe. I do. But sometimes I wonder. Why is it God just seems to forget about some of us? Maybe he's busy somewhere else. What can I do? What a friend does. You've listened. I just wanted you to know what's going on. I'm glad you did. No one did the surgery because we were manipulated by the gunman. That's ridiculous. We did the surgery because Audrey was dying. And it was the right thing to do. It was the only thing we could do. In your opinion? Yes, she was having grand mal seizures. Her pupils were uneven. She was totally unresponsive. She was dying right in front of our eyes. And there was nothing we could do for Dr. Falk. At least we had a chance to save Audrey. So you agreed with Dr. Scanlon's decision? Yes, absolutely. And how long have you been an expert in cranial surgery? Sarcasm is not necessary, Clem. I'm not an expert. You know that. That's the problem. There weren't any experts there. You don't know what it was like to try to save her to think that maybe you could, and maybe you couldn't, but to know that every second counted. You don't know what that was like. It's all right. Just tell us the facts. What happened? Okay. Um, I know I'm getting worked up now, but everyone stayed really calm at the time, especially Joe. He just jumped in there to try to save her. Even with that nut holding a gun at his head and talking and taunting him, and he just decided what to do, and he did it. You said before that you were upset, that you worried about Audrey dying. Was the decision to operate emotional or not? It was both. Um, I'm sorry, I'm getting confused. Look, all I can say is that I was there and you weren't, and he did the right thing. I would have done exactly what he had done, except that he was braver and faster than I was. He jumped right in there. Right away. And I could only assist with the procedure. You should know that. I helped. I helped hold her. I sponged her off. I gave advice. I said I thought we could do it. So I'm equally guilty or responsible or whatever you want to call it. Karen. For the record, I'd like to state that I also assisted. In fact, I was the one who said the procedure was possible. What do you mean? I found the drill. I also figured out how to sterilize what instruments we had, and I advised Dr. Scanlon in the positioning of the burr holes. I also advised and conferred, and I supplied instruments. I would have too, but my hands were extremely unsterile at the time. But I encouraged them to do something, so I'm equally responsible. Well, your solidarity is very commendable, if confusing. You will have to excuse us. We need to confer. Lee, Monica, Clem. There goes this year's class. Look, uh, you guys, you didn't have to do that. Shut up and take some help for a change, will you? Yeah. All right, well, thanks. Thanks a lot. I just hope it doesn't come back to haunt you. That's all. Please, you'll have to excuse us for the delay. Unfortunately, you've not only made this confusing, it's now become very, very difficult. After hearing Dr. Wexler's remarks and the fact that most of you have taken responsibility for this issue, we are now going to have to rethink the entire situation. She's meter in the lab, okay? There's B, there's A. Serena? Uh, 
Serena? Serena? Hi. Listen, it, it, it's Lucy. I'm a friend of your daddy's, and I'm here to take you home. You'd be safe with me. You could go home and see your daddy. Serena, please come out. Where are you? Just, just tell me where you are, and I'll take you home. Serena, come. Lock her up, lock her up, take the keys and lock her up, my fair lady. Run. Make a move, make a sound. You'll never see Serena again. <gasps>